Some bloke or other recently said to me that the Chilterns was one of the most English places in the country, Anglo-Saxon. Well, this week we're gonna set out to see if we can prove him wrong. Join me. You see, I think that the Chilterns were part of the Danelaw, that significant swathe of the country that was controlled by the Norse men for quite a long period of time. So in theory, we should be able to find some evidence of that here in the place names, find some Norse remnants in the uh, names of some of the settlements in this area of the Chilterns, and then I can prove that bloke wrong. Chitty bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang, chitty bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang. Our fine four fendered friends. Sorry about that. I'm really sorry about that. It's the chitty chitty bang bang windmill, and I obviously got carried away there. Obviously. Now I know that certain followers of this channel are potentially going to hold my antiquarian toes to the coals about this video, so I just want to disclaimer. I'm not an etymologist. In fact, I can barely even say that. Here on the screen are my reference aids for decoding place names. So any mistakes are theirs, not mine. I'm at the Thames, and that's definitely not a Viking name. It's Britonic. Through the millennia, the Thames has been a division between uh, different factions, tribes, uh, and regions, etc. And it's very likely that it was the extent of the Dane law in this area. Wow, I look like a pretty cool antiquarian there. I started at the point where the Hambledon and Thames valleys join and then headed up the Hambledon Valley. A pretty bad start, 1-0 to the British. Oh, this is a bit more promising. Danesfield House, aka Danes Ditches. But before we head up the Hambledon Valley, I've been distracted by something else I've spotted on the map. Behind me there, you can see Danesfield House. Uh, nowadays, that's a hotel and spa. But that's an interesting name, isn't it? Danesfield. And it turns out that this hotel is built into a hill fort, a promontory hill fort overlooking the Thames. I might possibly be on a spur of the hill fort in the hotel grounds uh, here, and you can see the fantastic view that it has down into the Thames Valley. Danesfield House, Danes Ditches, it all sounds like it's pointing to Vikings in the Chilterns, doesn't it? But it turns out that an antiquarian called Thomas Langley identified this as a Danish encampment in 1797, and subsequently that has been shown to be totally incorrect. And all the finds have pointed to this being a Middle Iron Age uh, fort. And it's right on that boundary between uh, the Catavaluni and the Atrobates. What was it with the antiquarians of the 17 and 1800s that made them so obsessed with the Norsemen? And interestingly, as well as the Iron Age finds, there's been Neolithic and Bronze Age artefacts uh, unearthed here in this devastated uh, hill fort. So it's nothing to do with the Vikings. And a little bit of extra research shows that before the site was identified as a Danish encampment in 1797 by this uh, idiot Langley, uh, the original house here was called Medley Cots, which I don't think has very much uh, Norse in it. I just want to clarify that whilst I am an antiquarian, I'm not an old school antiquarian, I'm not obsessed with all things Danish. Danes Ditches is just modern English border dash then. Let's see if we can do any better here as we move up the valley to the picturesque picture postcard village of Hambledon itself, the ancestral home of WH Smiths. Butcher. Ah, oh, there's uh, not a baker or a candlestick maker for that matter, so I can't do that gag. Despite the crowds, it's a lovely village and I'd recommend Hambledon for a visit. It's got even got a lovely Winterbourne running through it, although by my calculations, 
it's the 23rd of March, so I think we're now in spring by a couple of days, so that really should have stopped by now. They filmed uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang here in this village, and if you watch carefully, you'll see they drive past that phone box door built into the wall, but it was painted grey to disguise it. Bingo! Bakers, but alas, no candlestick makers. Alas, no Viking in Hambledon. It's all Old English. And it uh, translates as Crooked Valley. Yes, Crooked Valley. So Hamel, Old English, Crooked, and then Denue, uh, Old English for Valley. Oh dear, it's not going very well, is it? And at this rate, that bloke is going to win. This is going to rock the experiment to its very core. Next up the valley, we have Skirmit. Now, I have long thought that Skirmit sounds very Viking, doesn't it? Skirmit, it's got a sort of aggression to it, but apparently not. Most resources will tell you that the skir part of this is Old English for Shire, and the mot part is Old English for meeting place, the meeting place of the Shire. I had a sort of a distant memory of an old walking book. I think it was called 10 Challenging Hikes in the Chilterns, probably 35 years uh, out of print. And I found it and looked it up. And in that, it does confidently say that Skirmit is Danish in origin. Meaning the same thing, a meeting place of the Shire. Everywhere I looked, all the normal uh, suspects were telling me that this was a old English name, Skirmit. Then I had a bingo moment and I found one that acknowledged that the sk part, the SK, could be Scandinavian. So at last we have our first evidence of the Vikings here in this Chilterns Valley. Yes, we've got one. As if I didn't know that was going to happen. Next, it's Dibley in the county of Midsummer. This is the almost comically beautiful village of Turville, but it is absolutely hopeless for us. It's pure Old English. It's probably fair to say that the village of Turville has become more famous in the age of television and film. That's the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang windmill again on the hill looking down upon the village. Oh, Not for my for... cup of tea, but of course Geraldine Granger, the vicar of Dibley, lived here. And of course we have uh, Midsummer Murders and Morse here as well, amongst uh, countless others. But it is hopeless for us in our quest for Vikings in the Chilterns. It's pure old English for open, dry land. Perhaps what's more interesting about it is the way the name has corrupted into Turville. This is what it was in 796. Perhaps I better have a pint and explain a bit more about the Dane law. Okay, so large areas of northern, central and eastern England were conquered by the Vikings in the late 9th century and went on to be managed by them. And Dane law was not a term that was coined by those uh, invaders. It... Uh, got that label in the 11th and the 12th century when scholars identified that in those areas of the country there was a unique and distinctive form of customary law that was very different to the uh, areas that were managed by the English. In Old English it was, I'm not going to try and pronounce it, I'll put it down there. But the area covered by the Dane law was not necessarily intensively settled by Vikings, but their aristocracy were powerful enough and in power for long enough that their laws extended throughout that Dane law region. Where I more normally film, or more regularly film, in the north, there are a lot more Viking names surviving, things like Thorpe, Kirk, By, those sorts of things. There's not so much of that where we are here today. And that's possibly the reason why some people like that bloke claim that uh, areas have no Viking heritage whatsoever. Whereas in actual fact, their laws were prevailing, even if there weren't actually that many Norsemen living in a particular area. 
I do understand, by the way, why some people hold that view that places like the Chilterns are uh, pure English. Just look at all the bottoms, uh, for example, all over the place. It's absolutely full of bottoms and you can't get uh, much more English than bottoms, can you? Uh, halloumi fries, by the way, and uh, Braxbeer's bitter, a uh, proper bitter, no citrus there. I do actually really recommend this pub in Turville, the Bull and Butcher, but it does have a almost comically rude landlord, which was very amusing. And actually that's very English, isn't it? Difficult to say, it's Fingist or Fingist. Right, uh, last chance, I'm running out of time and I'm gonna have to put in a formal complaint now to Buckinghamshire County Council because I've just been caught in a massive hail and snowstorm and it's meant to be spring. We're in Fingist. Possibly best known for that, it's um, fabulous Norman Church. Right, let's deal with this before the hail comes back. So Tinghurst in the 11th century and by the 16th century the F has come in uh, like this. Now this name is an Old Norse and Old English hybrid. Uh, the Ting part is the Old Norse. Hey, and guess what? It's Old Norse for assembly placed. And then the Hurst bit is the Old English wooded hill. So it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, we've got another assembly place here at the head of the valleys, just like we had one at Skirmit. And it is surrounded by wooded hills. I think it's interesting and significant that we have these two villages at the head of the valley here, both with Norse elements in their name and both denoting that they were meeting places, assembly points, part of the Danelaw system. Hey, so maybe the children's is not quite so Anglo-Saxon, not quite so English as that chap said to me the other day. <laughs> okay, so we found two little slivers of evidence in the names of settlements here that the Norsemen were here. And I think the fact that both of those villages were assembly points adds further credence to the argument that the Dane law was in operation here in the South Chiltern. So I think I've proven that bloke wrong and uh, earned my credentials as an amateur antiquarian. Excuse me. Hello. What do you mean I can't move because there's a 30 mile per hour speed restriction sign behind me that spoils the idyllic village scene? It's the end of the video. Yeah, 